So good evening. My name is Kathy Welby. It is my pleasure to welcome you as we celebrate the pastoral relations covenant between the Gray Street Community of Faith, our student minister, Laura Russo, and the Prairie de Pine Regional Council. It is wonderful to see so many faces without masks, as Laura says. <laughs> there are a number of people participating in tonight's worship service. Reverend Kristen Woodburk, our regional liaison during the search process. Reverend Virginia Coleman, our pastoral charge supervisor. Reverend Teresa Moisey, Laura's educational supervisor. Reverend Michael Wilson, who mentored with Laura while she was at Charleswood United Church. Laura herself, of course, and a team of many from Gray Street. I just wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight to officially welcome Laura into her role as student minister at Gray Street. We will begin now with the territorial acknowledgement. We acknowledge with gratitude the traditional territories of our indigenous and Métis neighbors and their hospitality. We offer our respect and commitment to living into right relationships with all our relations. So before we proceed with, with worship, there is a couple of housekeeping details that go along with uh, running Zoom. Um, number one, we're going to be muting everybody. And so if, if you're uh, assigned to speak, just make sure your mute button is off. But if we, we keep everybody muted, that cuts out the background noise. So that was that's great. And there will be opportunities to sing. And so it's especially uh, important that you leave it muted then because it gets kind of wild if <laughs> you don't do that. Uh, um, some of the responsibilities tonight will be by using the thumbs up reaction button. And I know I heard some people say, oh, I haven't had a chance to do that. So I'm gonna try and, try and lead you through this teaching session. If you're on a laptop or a desktop computer, if you move your mouse down to almost the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you will find um, a little reaction button there that should give you a thumbs up that looks like this. You see that by my face, okay? Oh, yeah. And for those of you that are on tablets, I understand if you touch the screen up in the top right-hand corner, there should be three dots. And if you touch those dots, it will expand to, to giving you the options for the thumbs up. Did I do okay, everybody? This was my big training session for everybody yep. tonight. I got uh, it. So I can tell you that um, we've got a few people visiting from other churches. Uh, Charleswood, where Laura spent about two years uh, working with them. I know there's people from Gordon King tonight. Um, Earl and Joyce, I know, belong to Westworth. Of course, there's some Gray Street folks here. And if I haven't mentioned your church, maybe you want to unmute yourself and just say who you are and where you're from. How would that be? Because there's a few people I don't recognize the names. I'm Don Shaw. I was a student along with Laura for a couple of years, and I'm currently in ministry at Atlantic Garden City United Church. Welcome. I'm Judy Hare, and I'm the Pastor Relations Minister for Prairie de Pine Regional Council, and I worship with the people at Transcona Memorial. Oh, once again, welcome to everyone, and we will now enter into worship, and I will invite Roy to offer the lighting of the Christ candle. The light of understanding, the light of compassion, the light of community, all represented by the light that shines from this candle. Let the light illuminate our lives, our worship, and our way forward as we gather as God's people.
Ten was not cooperating. I'm now going to offer our statement of purpose. We gather this night to join together in worship in the name of the God who is creator, Christ, and spirit. We gather as well to celebrate two covenants. One is the covenant marking a new pastoral relationship among the Prairie to Pine region the Congregation of Gray Street United Church, Laura Russo, and Pastoral Charge Supervisor, Virginia Coleman. The second is the Learning Covenant among Laura Russo, the lay supervision team appointed on behalf of Gray Street United Church, Teresa Moisey, Educational Supervisor, and the Office of Vocations, United Church of Canada. May God be known to us in our praise and our prayer, in our listening and our speaking, in our promises and our commitments.
the opening prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for your grace. We know that you are with us in each and every moment, that it is through you that we are able to gather and welcome your presence here with us today. Blessed Lord, we worship you and commit today's special program into your care, that your light shines on us to illum illuminate us and bless us tremendously. We pray for your blessing on the church and on this gathering. We thank you for this opportunity of establishing new covenants of faith. We pray for your blessing on the church and this gathering, and thank you for the opportunity of establishing new covenants of faith. Thank you, God, for your reassuring presence, for letting us walk with you each day, for your faithfulness. Let us all leave here graciously imparted with spirits renewed. Accept our thanks and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Time. I'm here to share uh, the faith story of Grace Street United Church. Grace Street United Church is a friendly, welcoming gathering community found in the heart of Elmwood. Many of our folks are connected through deep roots and return home to Grace Street from various neighborhoods in Winnipeg and the immediate outlying towns. Our congregation continually strives to carry out its mission to uphold Jesus as our Lord and Savior, to respond to God's grace in the form of communal worship, and to reach out to one another and our greater community in loving service. The Grace Street United Church community strives to be open and inclusive to all people. Every effort is made to make all who enter feel welcome, regardless of the journey that has brought them here. We also strive to make the physical space welcome and accessible to all. Sunday mornings find the church buzzing with folks greeting each other with hugs and words, catching up on the news and concerns of the previous week, as we gather for worship, our services are traditional and, in the, and we follow the lectionary, occasionally stepping away from it when there's a special celebration or message to be shared. We honor the changing seasons of the liturgical calendar by celebrating or by incorporating the chosen colors and banners. The service includes a time with the children, a vibrant music ministry, a weekly message specific to everyday life, and the time for personal reflection and prayer. Interest groups are an integral part of the church structure. People are encouraged to share ideas, plan and participate in groups once they are formed. The projects may be long-term, such as the worship planning, 
and choir or short term, like a Lenten study group or a fundraiser. While Grace Street United Church is very much an urban community of faith, the people have not forgotten their responsibilities to the wider church, local and global communities. We enthusiastically strive to support the work of mission and service through prayer, through financial support, through education, and through outreach. A dedicated time during the weekly worship service is available for the mission and service enthusiasts to raise awareness of its good work. Changing times have meant learning new ways to deliver worship and stay connected with our church family. Our worship services are recorded and uploaded to our church website each week. Email, phone calls, home mail delivery, and Zoom gatherings keep us connected. As a welcoming and open community of faith, the people of Grace Street United have formed a cluster with other local United Church faith communities and share in fellowship, celebration, and in worship. These shared experiences may take place within Gray Street's home or at the church home of one of the other six area United Churches. The building in which Gray Street families gather is more than a place of Sunday worship. We welcome various groups from the community to use our space. Our certified kitchen is home to the independent catering businesses and a group of fundraisers in support of local dog shelters. The lower hall has been used by various groups, Sparks, brownies, community service groups, local schools, and for private functions. The sanctuary is home to the United Church on Sunday evenings when they gather for worship, Bible study, and fellowship. The following testimonials are from members of our church family. It is a comfortable place to be. We continually try out new things for worship while also holding on to the good practices that are familiar. We are a very close group who really care about one another. I am part of our community of faith because I feel that my personal faith needs constant nurturing. I have never found a faith environment that ministers to my needs as effectively as Gray Street does. The congregation in our church gets it. We not, may not be the best at describing it or selling it, but we live it enthusiastically. If you are new, we welcome you. If you're old, we value you. If we disagree, we resolve it. If we make a mistake, we fix it. We are a little church with a big heart, a community of faith for over 75 years. Hello. Tonight I'm going to be reading from Job 38, 1 to 7, the New International Version, and Job 34 to 41, and Hebrews 5, 1 to 10. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do you report to, do they report to you, here we are? Who gives the isbis wisdom or gives a rooster understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt for prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens? or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when, it, when its young cries out to God and wander about for lack of food? Next is Hebrews. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are gone astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when God 
and when God called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the ones who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his irreverent submission. God thought he was. He learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of internal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Malchusedek. In these words, may the word of God be known to us. Let me begin by uh, thanking all those involved for the invitation to um, be part of this service and, um, and certainly for the privilege of, of sharing this particular time of, in worship. Uh, it was uh, mentioned uh, briefly, but for just over two years ago, Laura came to Charleswood um, to do two years of, or what turned out to be two years of, of uh, supervised ministry, um, what was once upon a time referred to in theological education as feel dead. That is to say, it was uh, a shorter period of time, 10 hours a week, and uh, therefore very targeted in the, in the things that she would do, and, and now a much more substantial uh, relationship and training experience uh, with you at Gray Street and in what some corners would call um, internship. So um, uh, it was, uh, if I can just say one sentence about that experience, we had a great time and it was somewhat miraculous because she did an entire second year of internship and we were never in the same room at the same time. So she's got a way of getting things done, pandemic or maternity leave or uh, technology or otherwise. And uh, so uh, I have no doubt that uh, you're going to have a, a wonderful time, wonderful time together. It was just, um, it was just a couple of years ago. And, and I, this sounds like I'm not very clever, but it took me about 50 years to figure out that the old children's grace God is great. God is good. Let us thank God for our food. Uh, was profound. That saying God is great and God is good is actually saying two different and important things about God. And that good is just not a synonym for great that rhymes with food. And I, I blame this on my parents and on every Sunday school teacher I ever had for uh, inadequately explaining to me the intricacies of the book of Job when I was a child. Now, I only want this to be about 10 minutes and I want all of us to get something out of it. So I can, for the faces that I can see, or maybe you can thumbs up if it's, can we agree and not have to go down the rabbit hole, can we agree that God doesn't kill Job's family? I'm not seeing many thumbs, but anyway, I hope we can agree on that. And, and, I, and I'm not trying to do the, uh, uh, the, the bypass, the narrative thing that uh, can easily happen, say, well, yes, no, uh, God, God doesn't kill Job's family. Satan does, but Satan does it with God's permission. I mean, that's what Job chapter one says by the last chapter. Even the narrator gives up all pretense that actually Satan was doing it with, with, uh, with, uh, with God's permission. Job is wisdom literature. And we have to begin by saying that some things outlandish can be said in wisdom literature in order to allow wisdom literature to do the thing that it wants to do. Now, 
this is a little bit to do with the literary forms of scripture. And Laura is an expert on literary forms of scripture. And so Grace Street for the next two years, she'll be talking about literary forms of scripture. And you go, oh, yeah, right. Like the way Job is wisdom literature. Yeah. But list, wisdom literature wants to address the, the largest questions of faith and life. And so it uses a narrative structure to kind of establish something. It, it, you begin with an equilibrium and then you introduce a disruption. And then those big questions get unpacked. And, and then finally, somehow there's some, a resolution and the equilibrium gets reestablished. And it's in the disruption and in the dialogue that happens in the disruption that um, we get to explore things that we might not otherwise if we were completely fixed on narrative. That's why it's important to say, let's just agree for the time being, let's suspend our questions and say that we all agree God doesn't kill Job's family. Uh, this is important because if if God wasn't, if, if it was a human being, if some other disaster struck or some evil befell Job and his family and all this, and it wasn't by God, then the large question that would be asked would have to be about justice and crime and the nature of evil. But by allowing for a narrative purpose in wisdom literature to say that God allowed Satan to eliminate Job's family, uh, what we're doing essentially is, is, is creating the space for the story to be about suffering. And we get to ask the large question, where is God in the midst of our, in the midst of our suffering? Uh, we just read a few verses from one chapter. So I do want to talk a little bit about the story. Hopefully it's familiar to many of you. It begins um, with a, picture of a of a of a person in a household that is immensely blessed um, but also with a conversation between God and Satan in wisdom literature it's no big deal for God and Satan to get together and have a chit chat and God says uh, you know Satan's been walking around the earth and God says you know have you considered my servant Job um, there's no one like him. He's upright. He's blameless. He's, he's faithful. Um, he has seven sons and three daughters. He's got 3,000 camels and 7,000 sheep. He's got 500 oxen and 500 donkeys and lots of servants and lots of lands and his crops never fail. And yet at the end of every day, just in case something went wrong, just in case there was a sin that he wasn't aware of, he makes a sacrifice and he's, uh, He's the model of, of the model human being, the model faithful person. And, and uh, Satan says, well, yeah, sure, I can consider Job, but give me a break. You, Job's got everything going for him. He's got the family, he's got the land, he's got the wealth, he's got the animals. It's uh, uh, take that away and let's see what happens. Now, for those of you of a certain age, this is starting to sound like the, the plot from 48 or... Um, trading places with <laughs> Eddie Murphy, but don't get distracted by that. Uh, and, so, and so what it happens, and of course, because the narrative is serving the larger purpose of the, of the, of the large question, uh, we deal with it rather quickly. Well, the sheep gets stolen and, and, uh, and the fire comes down on some of the other animals and, and, uh, and the tornadoes where all the hits where all the family is gathered and, and, and he's wiped out. Chapter two, God and Satan get chatting again. And God says, have you considered my servant Job? And uh, uh, Satan will says, well, yeah, but uh, he may have lost everything and he's still faithful. He's still upright and blameless, but uh, we didn't hurt him. God says, oh, go ahead, do what you're going to do, but, 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 but spare his life. And Job gets covered with sores and he's sitting in a heap of ashes and in, and he's using a, a pottery shard to, to scratch and give some, some uh, scratch his skin to relieve the, the pain and the agony. And, and that's where the narrative kind of suspends 
And I'll tell you what happens for the next 36 chapters. This is why they don't teach Job in Sunday school. For the next 36, 36 chapters, these three friends arrive and they and Job have this long, elaborate, philosophical conversation about the nature of suffering. And, and at the root of it all is that the three, three friends say, well, you've received this punishment, this curse. You must have done something to deserve it. God wouldn't let this happen unless you, Job, deserved it. And Job fights back, no, I didn't do anything. And the friends come back and say, yeah, but uh, uh, maybe you did something and you, you didn't even know it. Or, or, or maybe it was a, a, a something that was a, a systemic. Or maybe, the, maybe, it was, maybe it was something. And, and Job just keeps fighting. And he's got long speeches and soliloquies. And the friends have long speeches for 36 chapters. It goes on and on. And God just sits and waits as if God sometimes just wants us to, you know, exercise all that stuff we're carrying around inside so that we'll pay attention. And finally, in um, verse 38, God speaks. Verse 38, God speaks. And it's not what you would expect. Um, we read a few of the of the verses and I, i'll just read a, a a couple more just so that you hear the the nature of god's response to the, all of this it's all rhetorical where were you when i laid the foundations of the earth who supported the sea at its birth in all your life have you ever called up the dawn or assigned morning its place? Uh, verse 19, which is the way to the home of light? And where does darkness dwell? Verse 22, have you visited the storehouses of, of snow? Um, we're left wondering what's the purpose, but God's establishing something in these rhetorical responses, in these, in, these, in these questions, that yes, in the blessings, we feel the imminence of God. But God isn't just our friend. Um, God is also transcendent. Um, God is one with us and among us and within us and all of that language that we use. Um, but God is also one beyond and above us. And, and you need to hold in tension both of those things. Or <laughs> remember that God is good and God is great. God is great and good. And those two aren't, aren't necessarily the same thing. What the story of Job does in answering that question is you can talk, you and your friends, Job, can, can talk to the, to, the, to the end of time. But even though you were disagreeing with one another, you were, you were essentially sharing the same um, understanding or worldview or theology, if you will. And that is that I punish and I reward. Your friend said that, you were punished because you did something. And you said, no, I was, I was punished, but I don't know. I don't think I did something. I don't punish. And I don't reward. I am greater than that. Thinking of me as one who punishes and rewards is making an idol of me. It's, it's, making, it's taking God and, and making God in human image because people have this tendency to punish and reward. And beyond that, I'm, I'm, I'm greater than that. There's a transcendence in me. There's an eternity in me. There is grace in me. And I'm not so small that just because you did something, I'm gonna turn on you and take away your family and your livelihood and everything that's known to be a blessing to you. Well, 
maybe two years, especially one year in which we didn't even see each other in person, is maybe that's not enough to say that I know Laura completely, but Gray Street, all the Gray Street people, I want you to hear this closely. Laura believes this. Laura believes, <laughs> Laura believes this with all her heart. She thinks God is good, calling us to justice and into community and working with one another. And Laura thinks God is great and someone that we can turn to, one who laid the foundations of the earth, one who knows where the storehouses of snow are kept. And no matter what happens in the next two years in the ministry you share, that is going to serve you well. That there is one in this dual capacity of being a leader and being a learner um, who believes in the depths of her heart of the imminence and the transcendence of God. Before all of this um, disruption that we're living with happened, there was a small event at the University of Winnipeg sponsored by the United Center for Theological Studies. And uh, they brought in Dr. Dale Martin, a renowned biblical interpreter from Yale University. And his topic just two and a half years ago now, his topic was about um, uh, proclaiming the gospel in a post-truth world. Why should anybody listen to anybody anymore? Is the question we're asking ourselves. And he said something I took to heart that day. I've shared with Charles with people a couple of times. He says, in this world where, where truth and what truth is, is something that, that there are competing views and understandings and versions of that all the time, we might apply what he refers to as the doctrine of divine simplicity which is remember in your hearts the things that are most basic about God and then let that direct how you live your life together in God's name. The doctrine of divine simplicity is remember that God is one. There's no division in God. If what you believe leads you to think that God is on one side instead of another side, that you're going down the wrong path. God is one. The second is that God is good. Goodness itself. And the third is that God is love. Such a love that if God did not exist, this love would not exist. And he said, when you take the idea that God is one and God is good and God is love and you take these things to heart, then your community lived out as the body of Christ lived out in God's name can only include and never exclude. It only grows and it never shrinks. It only expands and it never contracts. It only adds and it never subtracts. It only invites and it never sends away. It is always open and it's never closed. There are two covenants being celebrated tonight. They're not being initiated. I know that they've begun but they're being honored tonight, recognized tonight. There are two covenants. There's a pastoral covenant and there's a, a educational uh, covenant. And I want to remind you that, that it's deliberately been chosen that these are called covenants, but they're not called ecclesiastical contracts. And they're not called memorandum of understanding. These are covenants, and a covenant is uh, a promise made with the understanding, not just in the, in the presence of God, but in the partnership with God, that God is a party to the covenant, that God is one with whom the educational team and the congregation and Laura and the various supervisors are coming into or acknowledging a relationship with 
the one who laid the foundations of the earth, the one who set the stars in their courses, the one who knows where the storehouses of snow are kept, is a full partner with you in this. So let some be afraid and others be delighted. Amen. I know that Kathy introduced me before, but just for those that don't know me, um, I'm uh, Kristen Woodbrook and I've uh, been pleased to be able to serve uh, as a pastoral relations liaison with uh, Grace Street as they've been going through this process. Um, and I know lots of you because I'm also from Charleswood, so hello to everybody there. Uh, but it is really, it's, it's my pleasure to be here as tonight we formalize this appointment of Laura Russo as ministry personnel with the congregation of Grace Street United Church. And by our words and actions this night, we're going to form a covenant among the Prairie de Pine Regional Council and the Congregation of Gray Street United Church and Laura Russo. And of course, also God being part of that covenant. After prayerful discernment and the approval of the people of Gray Street United Church, we present Laura Russo, who has been called to a ministry of word, sacrament, and pastoral care among us. We believe that Laura's skills and talents complement our faithful witness, ministry needs, and community context. Laura, you are here in response to the call of Grace Street United Church and by the action of Prairie de Pine Regional Council. This is a call to undertake a ministry of word, sacrament, and pastoral care in this place. And those of you from uh, Gray Street United Church, you are called to join Laura in worship and study and prayer and action. And those of us who are from Prairie de Pine Regional Council, we are responsible for supporting this ministry. So let's begin with a time of prayer. And let's pray for God's grace as we covenant together. 
United God, you call us into your church to accept the cost and the joy of discipleship. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and unite us as people who embody your love in the world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in the presence of this virtual community we've created tonight, do you, Laura Russo, accept the responsibility of ministering with Great Street United Church? Will you share in the ministry goals and faith story of this community of faith? And will you accept the support and encouragement of this community of faith? I, I will, God being my helper. And Laura, will you accept the guidance of Prairie to Pine Regional Council as you offer the gift of leadership in word, sacrament, and pastoral care to the congregation of Grace Street United Church? Will you work cooperatively with this regional council and the wider church and community to embody God's love in the world? I will, God being my helper. Thank you. Virginia Coleman. You have been appointed by the Prairie to Pine Regional Council as the pastoral charge supervisor to oversee the governance of Gray Street United Church for the duration of Laura's student ministry experience. Will you undertake the responsibilities of pastoral charge supervisor, including supporting Laura in her ministry, ensuring the proper administration of sacraments, collaborating with the leadership team to ensure healthy governance within the congregation, and reporting to the Regional Council on the state of the pastoral charge. I will, God being my helper. Thank you. <clears throat> this next one is for the members of the Gray Street United Church and you're gonna respond with your reaction buttons at the end of it. So get, get those ready. So will you, the congregation of Gray Street United Church join with Laura and with Prairie to Pine Regional Council and the wider church in this ministry of worship, study, prayer, and action? And will you support Laura as she serves among you in this ministry? Please respond with your reaction buttons. I'm seeing lots of thumbs up, that's good. That's a good sign. And now uh, for all those of you who are members of the wider church of, in uh, Prairie to Pine Regional Council, get your reaction but buttons ready. Will you support Laura and the community of Grace Street United Church as they minister together? Please respond with your reaction buttons now. Great. So the church recognizes the different paths that lead to ministry and celebrates the particular ministry of each person. As Paul wrote to the churches in Corinth and in Rome, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same God is served. Christ is like a single body that has many parts. All of us are Christ's body and each one is a part of it. The United Church has recognized God's call to ministry in Laura Russo and has approved her course of study and her practical ministry placements as she follows that call. In order to fulfill the requirements for ministry practice, this appointment of half-time ministry was sought and this match was discerned between Laura and the needs and possibilities for ministry experience with Gray Street United Church. And so it is that today we celebrate this mutual journey in ministry as Laura learns and serves with Gray Street United Church. So, Laura, you have already stated your willingness to share your gifts for ministry as you work in worship with this faith community. Will you also commit yourself to growing in faith and discerning God's continuing call on your gifts, joining with others in this community of faith, with your supervisor, with your theological school, and with colleagues in study, in prayer, in conversation, and action? as the spirit enables you. I will, God being my helper. And Teresa Moisey, you have been appointed as Laura's educational supervisor. 
Will you share with her your knowledge and passion for ministry and your love of God, supporting her through the experience in our, this great faith community? I will, God being my helper. And this is to the members of the lay supervision team. You're going to react with your reaction buttons. So Darcy Albertson, Deborah Holoka, Greg Holoka, Kevin McKenty, Morgan Neflick Beatty, Samantha Tees, and Pat Wilson. You have been appointed to fulfill the role of lay supervisors. Are you willing to share your faith, offer wise counsel, and support Laura in her learning path, and thus by sowing seeds of the spirit, participate in Laura's growth into ministry? Please use your reaction buttons to respond. Great. Seeing the thumbs up. Luann, are you doing this next? I'm ready. Okay. So I am Luann Campbell, chair of the board and members of the congregation. You have heard the promises of Laura. Teresa and the lay supervision team who have answered God's call to service. We pledge to support them with love as we try, as we all try to live God's way. To indicate our support, please respond using the reaction buttons. Let us pray. Loving God, we have made a covenant with you and with one another. We are grateful for this opportunity to learn and grow in faith and understanding of your ministry in the world. Help us to encourage the gifts of all those involved in this covenant relationship. We pray in the name of the one who shows us the way. Amen. Let us rejoice in the covenant that we have made as we listen to this next hymn, I'm going to live so God can use me. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-present God, our helper, 
you have been the help of each one of us throughout our lives. You are there in our times of great celebration. You are there from our birth to our baptism into the Christian family. You are there throughout our lives in our worship and in our gathering around the Lord's table. You will be there when we move from this life into the life beyond death, as you have been with the ones who have gone before us. Gracious and ever-present God, our helper, we recognize that just as you are with us in times of celebration, you are also with us in times of great need. You are there even when we can't perceive your presence. As we celebrate the start of these new relationships and covenants within and beyond Gray Street United Church today, we praise you, God, our helper, for all the ways you have been with us in our lives, in the lives of all who have been part of this congregation over the years. We praise you for the ways in which your spirit has guided and challenged our denomination, the United Church of Canada, for nearly a century. Gracious and ever-present God, our helper, help us to trust that you will be with us in the future as you have been with us in the past. Help us to trust that you will be with us in times of celebration and times of challenge. Help each of us to embody your gracious and loving presence to one another within our church and beyond our church. As we celebrate this present moment, trusting you to guide us into the future, we say together the words that have sustained us and countless faithful Christians before us, as together we pray the words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we move from this time of worship, may the Spirit empower us to encourage one another and build up one another. 
with patience towards ourselves and one another. May we learn and grow together in faith and may all that we learn and do together be done for the glory of God, the God who is good and great, our majestic creator, our helper and our healer. Amen. I will go, Lord. I